On the back of my energy systems video, I did a few weeks ago now talking about the interaction of energy systems and interplay in a maximal exercise example. The obvious thing to do is to explain what happens in a sub-maximal exercise example, which is exactly what one of the questions was in the comments after that video asking about how does this change if I don't go out and sprint as hard as I possibly can from the beginning? How do these energy systems change when I go out for a jog or when I go out for a slow ride or in a long distance race? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Talk about the shift in what happens in an energy system interplay. I think this one's going to be a pretty quick one. So stick around. We'll get short, sharp, straight to the point. And yeah, let's get stuck into it. Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome back to the channel, talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, make sure you consider subscribing down below. Really appreciate the support and it does help to grow the channel uh, so I can get more videos out there and also help more people because at the end of the day, if you ask a question or, or you want something answered or I do something on the channel and it helps you, it's probably also going to help someone else who might be thinking the same thing. So the more people who subscribe, the more, uh, I guess, the more we can spread the message and, and some of the, the great stuff to others about the science of endurance and science and sports science in general to, to elevate and lift performance, the better it is for everyone. As I said in the intro, this is a bit of a follow up to a video I did a couple of weeks ago about energy system interplay, talking through how the energy systems interact to give us an output from anaerobic versus aerobic, where's it transition, what happens. But I talked about it in a maximal exercise example. So if you to go out and go as hard and as fast as you can for as long as possible, what are the transition points? How would the energy systems interact in that circumstance? And I, the great question come through, as I said in the intro of, well, what happens if we don't go maximal? What if we go on a sub-maximal effort? And this is a really, really good question. Basically, nothing changes is the simple answer. Those interactions still take place. ATP PC system still has a high contribution in the immediate term. Because if I go to get up to run right now, if I get up out of my seat and push up, I need some quick rapid energy to produce that movement to, to get going. I, I don't have an ox oxygen in my system to allow me to create that energy straight away. So I need some sort of quick chemical fuel just to give me that initial movement. Whether you're on the bike and you just turn the pedals to get them moving, or you go for a run, you push off, that first movement is quite explosive because it's the biggest change in intensity. And it's the same when we do a, a ramp test on the, on the treadmill or on the bike, you go from zero to 150 watts, or you might go from zero to um, 15 kilometers an hour, where, or, or 12 kilometers an hour, wherever you start and pulling numbers out of the midair here. But that's the biggest jump in intensity. Every jump after that is like 1k an hour or 30 watts, not these big chunks. So we need some anaerobic energy to get us going. So basically that graph that I put up, and I might chuck it up again to show you if, I, if I've got it here, I'll put it up and it basically just condenses down. In terms of time, everything just happens over a shorter time period. So instead of this, this cycle of we eventually work through an aerobic is our greatest contributor, the anaerobic start to have a minor role at about 90 seconds to two minutes onwards, this might start to happen at sort of 30 to 45 seconds, depending on how fit, fit you are from an aerobic perspective and anaerobic perspective as well. If you've trained really well, you can increase what we call your oxygen kinetics. So you get your oxygen consumption up and firing a lot quicker. We see this a lot in athletes when they come in to do the test. The fit guys will get up to oxygen consumptions of 45, 50 mils per kilo, and they're only running at 12, 13 Ks an hour, really fast oxygen kinetics. After that point, it's a really slow burn to get that VO2 up, and then at the end, it starts to spike. But it's the type of thing that they can get their oxygen consumption up really quick. It makes those first stages really, really easy. And we commonly see in those athletes really low blood lactate readings. No wonder they're really good at long endurance stuff because they're using a lot of oxygen very quickly at low intensity and, and very, I guess, effectively. It just compresses. Nothing really changes. ATP PC is going to have an initial contribution. Sure, it may not be as, as I guess, maximal in terms of because the intensity is not so high. We don't need as much ATP PC. C contribution or anaerobic glycolysis contribution to then get into the aerobic stuff and steady state. But it's gonna have a little bit. It might be two to three seconds of ATP PC as opposed to 10 to 12 we would see in a maximal sprint example. Anaerobic glycolysis might chip in for sort of 20 to 30 seconds rather than 60 to 90 in a maximal example. And then aerobic systems start to really become dominant from a minute onwards. It depends on where the intensity sits. So really, it, it just shifts. Nothing changes. Physiology stays the same. I guess that's a fundamental takeaway from today, and I might leave it on this, is that for the most part, unless something dramatically adapts and changes in humans overall, physiology pretty much stays the same in any circumstance. And that's the benefit of understanding things like energy systems and basics of, of interplay for any coach or athlete out there is because then you can apply it to any circumstance and then just understand that, well, all right, if we're at a reduced intensity, these are, these processes are going to move through, I guess, the stages or the increasing, decreasing contributions a little bit quicker, and we'll get to that aerobic system because the energy demand isn't as high, so there's less of an oxygen deficit to get up there to hit steady state, as I've talked about in previous videos. But then, if it's a little bit longer, if we've got a maximal effort and we've got higher, uh, we've got 
higher intensity and it's going to take us longer to get up there well this process is going to be stretched out a little bit so if we go as hard and as fast as we can for a, a maximal effort as long as possible that's where we get those upper limits if we don't go to that intensity and we go a little bit less well this all just shortens up so it really does depend on the duration of the event the intensity of the event and then the fuel availability like i said in that initial video is really going to depend and particularly important in terms of how does this change for sub maximal things just compress it all just goes through that process faster because it's easier I don't need as much oxygen in if I'm only working at 50% of my maximal intensity. That makes sense. I don't need these, as, as much energy. If I put my foot down in the, the accelerator in a car and I want to go to 50 kilometers an hour, it doesn't take much fuel consumption to get to 50 k's an hour and the acceleration actually happens reasonably quick. You get there pretty fast. But if I want to get to 200 kilometers an hour in the car, in my car, <laughs> acceleration is going to take a, a much longer period of time, but also it's going to burn through a lot more fuel and require more energy to produce that output. That's all that's happening in the body. Hopefully that's a good analogy for you guys to take away. Great question again though, because it's a really interesting one, leveraging off a video I've done. So as always, if you have some questions like that or any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below because they can lead to videos like this. And I'm sure, as I said before, it's gonna help someone else who might be thinking the same thing. If not, it's a video dedicated to you. So I really appreciate the, the questions coming through and it helps me build the channel as well. That is it for today. I'm gonna leave it there. So make sure if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button down below. Really enjoying the support on the channel. Keep the questions coming in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.